That's something me and Q have seen all the time is players topping their three woods and hitting their, their shots thin off the ground. And what happens is a lot of times we think, you know, this three wood needs to be in the front of our stance. So we set up to where it would be similar or more toward what a driver would be. And what happens is your club naturally wants to ground out behind this, more toward the middle of your stance where you would make contact with an iron. And the club starts coming back up as you're hitting this golf ball. So if I have my ball positioned too far forward, it's gonna be really easy to top the ball. So Q, let me hit a couple here. Yep. And I want you to read the angle of attack on my flight scope. And also, we'll also see the shot. Hopefully I don't top one in the water, but I probably will if I play it up in my stance here. So I'm gonna play this ball up in my stance like you've probably heard to do before with a wood. You know, I feel like I'm gonna lift it up in the air. A lot of times I'm barely gonna miss the ground and I'm gonna kind of thin it if I do this. Let's try it out. That was a pretty good top there. So what I <laughs> felt like, that was pretty awesome. I felt like as I'm making my normal swing that I would with a three wood, I naturally wanna ground out back here but my club is now working back up because it's too far up in my ball position. So I don't know if the flight scope's gonna read it. Did it read angle of attack? Yeah, or I didn't even pick it up, it was so bad. Didn't pick up anything. <laughs> so let's try one more and I'll do the same thing. Probably not as exaggerated here, but again, anytime I get this ball too far forward in my stance, the club wants to work up. What a lot of people don't realize is that the club hits down, even with a wood. A pitching wedge hits down on the golf ball, PGA Tour average hits down about five degrees down into the ground. So this club head, if it's a pitching wedge, is moving down into the ball at a negative five degree angle, like this. A three wood is moving down around negative two or three degrees. So it's still hitting down. The best players in the world are hitting down into the ball when they're hitting a three wood. And that's not very much of a difference. If you think of one minute on a clock, that's six degrees difference between one minute on a clock face. This is half of that. This is half a degree difference between a pitching wedge and a three wood. So when I put this ball way up in my stance, it's counterintuitive for what I'm actually wanting to do. I should be swinging the same with a pitching wedge and a three wood, where this has me swinging different, where I'm actually trying to lift the ball up in the air. Let's try one more time here and see if I can get a little more solid strike. Now, so there, even though I, I kind of hit it a little bit left, it wasn't the best shot, it was fairly clean, but it was on the bottom of the face. I was a hair from completely topping it again like I did that last one. Read any numbers on there? Yeah, you actually managed it up on that one a little bit, 0.8 okay. degrees. So my club is barely missing the ground back here and then I'm hitting up on the ball and that's why it felt so thin because my, my club is moving up into this golf ball and the bottom of my club is hitting the equator of the ball. It still ended up to be okay, but definitely not the margin for error that you wanna have. So the number one thing here we wanna make sure that we're playing all of our clubs from a pitching wedge to a three wood, very similar ball position. So let me just grab a wedge here. I would normally play most of my wedges right around the center of my stance. So here's a sand wedge or gap wedge. I'm gonna play it pretty much in the center of my stance if I'm playing a normal shot. If I wanna knock it down or do something different, I may move it a little bit, but not very much. When I play my three wood, all I'm gonna do is have that marginally, very marginally farther forward if I wanna get a little bit more height on it. I could even play a three wood from the middle of the stance. That would ensure that I hit down on it just like I am my pitching wedge. But I like to play what feels comfortable to me is about like this, right? I don't want that way up here by my front foot. That should be, if the camera's lined up correctly, right about the middle of my stance or maybe one ball toward the front. And again, the reason for that is I wanna be able to take the same swing with my pitching wedge all the way to my three wood, hit down on all those shots, and that way I make sure I make ball first contact, it's nice and solid, I don't thin it, and I don't chunk it. Now, you're probably asking about the driver. That is a little bit different. I do wanna hit up on the driver. So I'm gonna play that driver more toward my front foot so I can be hitting a positive angle of attack just like we saw on that three wood that I miss hit. The reason it's good with the driver the ball's up in the air. I don't have to worry about thinning the ball because there's no ground in the way. I can tee the ball up, swing up on it, hit it just as good in the center of the face. Now, one of the other problems with this is, what if I'm not very consistent? So now I got my good ball position, I'm making my swing, but one time I chunk one and the next time I thin one, I just can't hit the same spot every time. You know, we've talked about this, Q. What's the, what's the number one thing you see if somebody's struggling with that, what would you recommend? One thing that I often see is that when you put that ball further up in your stance, it can kind of compound another issue, 
which is when we see that ball up in our stands, what we want to do is we want to kind of lean toward the target as we go up to the top, top. So that's, you see here, that's what Clay's doing. As he went up to the top here, he kind of get his spine angle leaning toward the target a little bit. And when you do that, what you're going to tend to want to do is you're going to tend to want to fall away in the downswing. So you see as he goes down, he falls away. And look where that club bottoms out at. Bottoms out behind the golf ball. And that's going to compound the issues of hitting behind the golf ball. So what we want to do is get that ball nice in a good place like Clay talked about, and then also make sure that we're standing, be, getting to our lead, our trail side, excuse me, in the backswing, get nice and loaded up. And then the downswing, that's when we get our good weight shift and get to our lead side so we can get that ball first contact. So you want to try and hit one and where we get that good ball placement and then also get nice and loaded up and get to our lead side. Yeah, absolutely. And like he's talking about there, you know, when that ball's way up, you know, I think I want to get to my left side, so I'm just compensating by starting left in the backswing, and then you have to fall back. Because if you got left and you stayed left, you'd be swinging away, you'd just be chopping down, and it wouldn't be any good. So your body knows that's not going to work. So let's go ahead and do it the right way here now. I'm going to go ahead and play it toward the middle of my stance. Maybe just one ball up would be completely fine. And then from there, I'm going to feel like I get a little tilt behind it, like we talk about all the time in the top speed golf system. And then I can load up on my right side and shift to the left, swing down and through and be nice and powerful. Just like you're throwing a baseball, just like you're throwing a football, just like you're hitting about anything you do that's athletic. You load on the right side first and then you swing through to the left side. So good ball position. I'm going to try to hit down. I should have a little tiny bit of a divot if I do this correctly. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, much better right down the middle of the fairway, higher on the face, you'll see there's a little tiny divot here. That's what you should have if you're hitting a three wood. Most people think you shouldn't have any divot when you hit three wood. Watch the best players in the world. Every single time they hit this club, there's a little tiny divot. It makes it so much more consistent. So what were our numbers there on flight scope? So hit the ball quite a bit further, went from 220 to 246.6. And then our angle of attack got a little bit down on the ball, got negative 3.6 down on the ball, and that's gonna allow you to get that good ball first contact. It's almost perfect, just like we were talking about before, negative two, negative three is perfect for a three wood, and it's almost exactly the same as a wedge. The only difference between the three wood and the wedge, the wedge is sharper. That sharp leading edge cuts more of a divot. But this, if I was swinging a wedge and had that exact same swing, it would have a little bit more of a divot because that leading edge, but it feels the same. Whether I'm hitting any club in the bag, I just swing and it's gonna happen almost exactly the same when you're hitting off the ground. So here's the deal. Why don't we make it easy? Set up in the right position to make this happen. We've already talked about the ball position. Now get your spine position to where you can get that weight on your right side. You can have that good weight shift. What I want you to do is get a little bit of tilt in what I call the stable fluid spine. I'm gonna play one of my best videos for the stable fluid spine here in a second. Just click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see that, Go ahead and click the link in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to share with this with you and make it a whole lot easier to play consistent golf. What is it that allows us to have consistency in the golf swing? And what is it that allows that consistency to fall apart and create some bad rounds? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything that's, that happens in the golf swing is initially dictated by what happens with the spine. So if we're looking at a skeleton, you know, my spine's in the center of my body and everything else in my body is attached to my spine. So my shoulders are attached to my spine, my arms are attached to my shoulders, and then my arms are going to be actually swinging the club. Now when I see players that are really struggling, those guys that are hitting it out in the woods right, they're hitting in the left, then they have a few good holes, what's happening is their spine angle is changing. As they go to the top of the swing, maybe they have a reverse pivot, spine's angled back, falling back to the right, but there's a lot of inconsistency in that. And what happens is, as good athletes as we all are, the number one fundamental in golf, correct, keep it nice and stable, but fluid, we're gonna be able to hit those good clean shots time and time again. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this series of videos. Henrik Stenson, top five in both driving distance and accuracy. Roy McIlroy here, playing some of the best golf that anybody's ever played. And you can see just how stable.